Well, welcome to this week's Cumberland Roundtable, where we are going to look over our scripture and theme for this week and discuss it and share from our points of view and our fields of expertise and invite you to reflect on it and do the same with us. Uh, this week, our uh, scripture uh, comes from Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 21. And Victor, will you read for us? Sure. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances that I am addressing to you today. You shall learn them and observe them diligently. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. Not with our ancestors, our ancestors did the Lord make this covenant, but with us, who are all of us here alive today. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain out of the fire. At that time I was standing between the Lord and you to declare to you the words of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them and worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God command you, commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your town so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal, neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor, neither shall you covet your neighbor's wife. Neither shall you desire your neighbor's house, or field, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, be, to God. God. Thanks be to God. Um, Samantha, would you open us in prayer? Yeah, let's pray. God, thank you once again for this time to be together here around the table and in all of the places where people whom we love are watching. We just pray, God, that you would bless this time, bless the reading of your word and its application in our lives, um, and grant us wisdom, God, as we discuss and learn together. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Matt, why don't you start us off with you got for us to reflect on today. Well, uh, as I was reading back through this, three words stood out to me. And my version that I read is the NIV and you were reading the NRSV. Mm -hmm. um, so two of the three words showed up in yours, but the third <laughs> word was a little different. Tricky. Uh, tricky. Uh, but the words hear, learn, and follow, and I think NRSV said observe. Mm -hmm. And those stand out to me because to me, hearing implies listening. And if you are to listen, then that means somebody else is speaking and someone else is probably teaching. There's an opportunity for learning. Um, and so when it comes to the Ten Commandments, you know, we're not just supposed to hear them. We're not just supposed to learn them and be able to recite them back as a ritualistic kind of thing. Um, but we are to follow them, observe them, live them make them a part of our lives. And that's tricky. And when I think about it from a family standpoint, 
Uh, I went ahead and read on into chapter 6. And in chapter 6 you read, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lay down and when you get up. So we're not just supposed to hear them and listen to them. And follow, we're supposed to teach them to our children as well. And where, do we, where does that happen? Well, it doesn't happen just here in the church. It happens at home too. Um, you know, I think that God places a big emphasis on family. When you look at throughout, even in ancient culture, it seemed like family was important. When you, uh, the things that I've, I've read and I've seen about what family structure and homes look like, it wasn't just mom and dad and 2.3 kids and the family dog. It was mom and dad and their kids and their parents and maybe an aunt and uncle and their cousins mm -hmm. all live in it. I mean, family was important. And I think that God places an emphasis on family. Um, and it's kind of an obligation, maybe, that we should be taking this serious and teaching our families. Uh, not just hearing it, not just listening, but following it, living it, and teaching it. Well, that's interesting because it's a good point because God calls us family. Mm -hmm. Right, like that's. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I think families come in a lot of different shapes and sizes these days. You know, um, the nuclear family, like mm -hmm. you were describing, mm -hmm. isn't at all necessarily even normative anymore there is no norm anymore right I think from, I mean, from well but even if you think about that is that that was that's a 20th century invention mm -hmm. pre-20th mm -hmm. century mm -hmm. invention or, or conventions even in our area it wouldn't be that big of a, a deal to find a family living in rural west Tennessee sustenance living mm -hmm. that's living very much with the same sort of family dynamics that you're talking about seeing throughout scripture where the you know multiple generations are living mm -hmm. in the same house, grandma might die in the same bed that she was born in, kind mm -hmm. of a thing. So mm -hmm. that's not really so foreign historically. It's just a disconnect that we have because it's been what's been pitched since you know the forties and fifties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I would agree with that. That's interesting. All right, <laughs> who would like to who would like to share next, Victor? <laughs> We're not relying on rock, paper, scissors. We could. This is how we no, do. No. Highly That's how we do our parenting. Yeah. Is it? Is no. it? That's how we divvy up household chores. <laughs> All right. I think God in this text gives us as human beings the why before he gives us the list of commandments. Okay. And... Um, the why, why should we do these things? Well, because I am the Lord your God. That's what, that's what God says. I, I did what I said I would do. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. You are living as people who are now free. Therefore, you can trust in what I'm about to offer you. And God offers gifts. I think, okay, when I look at, I, I, I'm not in the family ministry. Well, I guess I I am in the yeah, family ministry, <laughs> but that's not my title. Um, but I look at it as, as a father when I tell my kids to do something. Sometimes the only reason I have is because I said so. You know, and, and maybe that might not be the best reason at times. But sometimes that's all I've got. I've heard it and I've used it. <laughs> <laughs> Tried and true. <laughs> But I guess if I were going to offer an excuse or, or an explanation, I'd remind my kids that, hey, I helped make them. I got up in the middle of the night sometimes, just sometimes, to feed them. Um, I shouldn't even looked at her when I said that because <laughs> I made personal sacrifices uh, that they would be benefited and because I've made myself a student of their attitudes and behavior. And I can see the bigger picture, mm -hmm. and I love them enough to give them a particular rule. Um, and I think that that's what God is doing in this text. Is, 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 and then God is saying, I can be trusted. I'm giving you this gift of the commandments. But I think that we often look at these as rules. 
a list of rules, but I, I believe that they're much more than a list of rules. I believe they're a way of life. And, and within the commandments uh, is God showing us how to honor and love God. And it has a lot more to do with our neighbors than even ourselves, hmm. right? Because there's so many, so many verses about, um, about loving our neighbor and caring for our neighbor and not coveting what our neighbor has and not doing things wrong to our neighbors and lying to our neighbors. Um, God has given a people an identity and he's shaping us into a community. And that's what God desires is for us to be in communion with one another in community. And he's showing us how to live together, how to be together and, and how to just just live out your life together and um, when we look at it that way God is is really giving us an identity as a people um, one of the things that that gets me is uh, I've heard Samantha say it a thousand times if we as a people of faith do not look any different than the world we are doing it wrong well if we follow the commandments we will look different than the world around us. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we are faithful to God and faithful to our neighbors, if we love like God calls us to love and be who God calls us to be, then, then we're going to look different. And there are a lot of times we look at the church today and it doesn't look much different than the world. Um, I see churches all over who are who are doing things it makes the church look a lot like an office building or a um, a bank or or a school if you will and or a marketing firm or a market or, yes or worship looks like a concert or well and, and I'm going a lot of times I feel like we are reacting out of fear uh, versus uh, out of faith. And we, we do things uh, when, when the school, the church shootings and, and stuff like that happened. Um, I remember going to a couple meetings and sitting in where we had to talk about at least someone carrying a firearm and um, getting uh, locks on our doors that that a uh, code or it looks a lot like a or or use a key card like you do a hotel mm -hmm. and, and you use those things and and i'm thinking okay are we reacting out of fear or are we reacting out of faith what what is our faithful reaction to that and i think that a lot of times we just in general look a lot like the world so um yeah well to piggyback on your whole identity part deuteronomy begins well with in moses's kind of first sermon beginning there starting with identifying god's identity right so, and there's this language that we hear a lot through the Old Testament it, when God is speaking, when the prophets are speaking it, and God said, right? I'm the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I am the God that made this commitment and did that. I am the God that made this commitment and followed through. I am the God of this commitment, and now I'm the God that brought you out of slavery in Egypt and set you up in the promised land. Like, God all along even begins this relationship by doing the heavy lifting up front of proving this is who I am. This mm -hmm. is what you can know about me. And I'll, I'm going to be your God and I want you to be my people. And this is what it looks like for you to be my people. And, and this is what it looks like when I'm your God. This is how this works. And I think that that's pretty interesting that um, people often in the church when they talk about Old Testament stuff, uh, mostly because I don't think that most of the, the Bible Belt churches 
is uber comfortable or well educated in Old Testament studies anyway, right? Mm -hmm. um, we tend to colloquially talk about like it's almost like God's different before Jesus, mm -hmm. like God's meaner than, mm -hmm. or you know, God's angry. And I'm like, well, really? So why is God going out of the way here to establish up front? Look, I have made my commitments up front. I, you know, I called the shot way out mm -hmm. and have kept up with my commitment before I invited you. You know, mm -hmm. and how many times did he forgive them and give them a second yeah, opportunity? Right, right, right. Opportunity? And this, you know, this is after wandering mm -hmm. in the wilderness mm -hmm. for forty years, and that didn't come up there, you know, so much. Um, so when when we when we are looking at our identity in God, even in Old Testament, we we see that it begins with God showing us who God is, and I think that that's pretty important takeaway. Yeah. Uh, there's also a sense um, you something you said that kind of struck this in me too uh this is god showing and you for all of these other um even up to now in deuteronomy we've got all these other peoples that are mentioned who have deities who have gods right Mm -hmm. And they don't really know anything about their gods. Like it's a free for all. Like it's a it's a okay. We have this we have this ball god, or we have this you know uh, these fertility gods in Egypt, or whether it's for for people, or whether it's for uh, all these gods that are attacked firsthand in the plagues. Right? You've got a god that says we do this. This is God saying mm, not really. You know. Uh, oh, you worship a dung beetle. That's interesting. <laughs> um, this is what I do with beetles. This is what I do with the Nile turn of blood. This is what I do with these pestilence, th these these things that that you worship, right? Um, what's interesting to me about all that is that it was a toss up. Like they they had unified systems. They had these for these uh, many gods, and they had these priests that were set aside in the sects. S-E-C-T-S -E of these many gods with well I, I don't, we don't know what appeases Osiris we don't know what, what appeases so let's take a shot and over time well we need water for the for the fields let's do these sacrifices let's do these things in hopes that we can be in good relationship mm -hmm. with these gods in this particular situation we have God Proving up front who God is and, and steadfastness and faithfulness to us and giving us a way if you want to know if you're okay. This is how you can know, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you can this is how you can know you're okay. Are you, I just don't know how I am with God. Are you are you are you having other gods before him? Well, yeah, well, then it's probably not a good thing. Like, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be okay with my neighbor. Well, are you coveting your neighbor's wife? Well, yeah, well, then stop that. If you want to be in relationship with your This is really a straightforward kind of a holy thing, it seems like to me. That, that is a gift. You it know? is. It is a gift. And it's, it's not a checklist. It's not, a, it's not one of those things that you can go home at night. It's like, check, 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 and... I'll check. Uh, I didn't do too good with that one. I'll try harder tomorrow. Mm. It's not that. This is a way of life, a way of being together. Being like yeah, being. yeah, and, relating, being. And and you know, are you taking care of your neighbor? That's another way. I mean, you can look at it. It's like, am I being faithful? Am I being faithful to my neighbor? The mission outreach in me. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, no, this is, this is the commandments. Um, one quick thing. Uh, I sat in on a meeting of... Uh, basically, it was to discuss how to close the doors of a church. You know, when is it time to close a church? And, and all the talk was about numbers. It was about, okay, if you have... You know, if you have five people, well, well, you know, it might be time for you to close. And I disagreed, and I threw us all off because that's that's what I do a lot of times, like in our staff meetings. Um, 
And I asked, I said, okay, can you tell me if, um, first of all, is that congregation taking care of their community? That's a good way to ask if, if a congregation is healthy. Sure. Um, are they taking care of themselves? And are they taking care of the people around them? And are they praising God? And are they doing the work of Jesus? And then why should it be closed down if they're continuing to do the work? And it, it's obviously not a money thing. Mm -hmm. or it's, it's just... And I think that that follows the Ten Commandments. Mm. So... Well, we're Presbyterian. We can start a presbytery with three people. Like, <laughs> you ought to be able to have a church with three people. Yeah, you know sure. Yeah. Huh. What about you, Samantha? Um, so there were a couple of things that stood out, and they even are kind of similar to what Matt and Victor have already pulled out. But I, I think at various times, um, like in society or in public discourse, when we don't have anything better to fight about, we fight about whether the Ten Commandments should be posted, you know, in a courthouse or in a school or a bank or whatever. I don't even, wherever they're, you know, should they or shouldn't they? Um, which I think actually goes against the spirit of the Ten Commandments because, like Victor has pointed out, they're not just meant to be like some checklist that we as a society should all be following. Um, in fact, I don't even think they're the end all be all for like faithful and Christian living. Um, but so it made me think about it in, in these couple of ways. And I noticed in verse 2, the Lord our God made a covenant with us. Um, so in other words, that, that's Moses talking, but in other words, keeping the law signals us as a covenant people. Like, and, and you said it a minute ago, like when we follow God's law, we enter into the covenant. I mean, we acknowledge our place in covenant with God. And I think that's important. And then in verse 6, and Victor pointed this one out, I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Um, so in other words, you can trust me. I'm not just giving you a list of ten things that you should or shouldn't do. Uh, you can trust that what I'm offering you is a way for you to take care of yourselves and of one another. Um, and to honor God as, as a part of the covenant. Um, and I, I thought of it this way for adolescents. Like, we know that what do they want to do with authority? Rebel against it. I mean, they're figuring out, I know, they're figuring out how to be individuals, how to be independent. And so to do that, you have to rebel against your authority, right? Um, so I think when we offer up the Ten Commandments, like this list of things we must do, uh, we just invite them even subconsciously to want to rebel against God's law. But guess what? Teenagers super love relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we offer the Ten Commandments, I think in the spirit of what they are, when we offer them as an invitation to covenant relationship, we encourage young people, I think, to... To strive to keep God's commands as a way to love God and to love neighbor, to take care of one another. Mm -hmm. I had written in my notes, God wants a genuine relationship with us, not merely a set of rituals that we must follow to stay in his good graces. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I heard you say relationship. He talked about yeah. relationship. There are a thousand things that come up as a pastor that surprise me in the life of the church in conversations with people. When you find out, like, uh, you'll hear somebody throwing around something that's unique to the CP church, and they'll, they'll want to say, well, that's not very common Presbyterian, or that's not what CPs believe, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you, you tend to give people the benefit of the doubt that when they say something very specific like that, that maybe they have a reason for it, and they know what they're talking about. And so I'm always surprised when they keep talking, and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think that you're correct there. Like if we're being, I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. fussing about your sentiment. I'm just saying maybe be careful about saying this is what CPs believe because I don't think CPs have mm -hmm. anywhere in our doctrine that specifically, you know. Um, so people will be very specific about things as if they are authoritative, even though they don't have um, actually anything backing it up. One of the things that comes up a lot in that vein is. Um, 
And so my friend asked me, you know, what, is it, what does it take to be a Christian? And it's like, you know, you be a good person, you go to church, you follow the Ten Commandments, and, you know, and you'll go to heaven. And you're I'm in, like, okay, the Jesus wasn't anywhere a part of what yeah. you said. It's actually in the name, you know, yeah. like Christian, Christ-like, like Christ. You didn't even mention Christ. Mm -hmm. So somewhere along the line, the church has clearly gotten derailed with the checklist law thing, mm -hmm. too, um, to the point that if the whole point of church is to help people to hear the invitation to be in relationship with Jesus, then that is counter to a checklist type of mentality. Mm -hmm. And yet, I run into that a lot. Like I feel, and, I, and then you feel bad, you're like, okay, I've been preaching here for how many years? <laughs> Clearly, I have not been overt enough about what it means to be a Christian. I, <sighs> Or, or, or did I? So then, then you feel like an idiot preaching to a bunch of people in church that are in church every week, that are here all the time about like basic stuff and watching them go, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, maybe Jesus like knew that that was our nature, maybe even by the time Jesus was walking the earth, because Jesus narrowed it down even further, right? I mean, what's the greatest command? There are two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, Everything. soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. You don't even have to remember the ten. Like you don't. I'm not even gonna make you keep up with the ten. You just remember these two, and all the all those others will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And which to me, when he says that, he says like those two include the other eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That if you do these like, two, you've got it all covered. Right. Yeah. And I mean, Jesus also also said that I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. But to fulfill it. And I think that sometimes we do a disservice if we don't wrestle with the commandments and wrestle with Jesus' words. And Jesus, Jesus basically walked a life according to the commandments. If you think, I mean, that's, that's sure. what he did. He came and he showed us how to live. He showed us how to love. He showed us how to be in relationship with one another. He showed us all of these things. And he also, but, but the thing about the gospel is that he also, we, we were shown grace yeah. through God dying on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and then raising him from the grave and giving us life mm -hmm. eternally. Like, he showed us. He showed us grace because we fail as, as human beings. Um, often, but but the wrestle. I want to go back to the wrestle with the commandments and with with Jesus, and, and to understand that you know a lot of people. I'm studying for this week um, the Leviticus text, mm -hmm. and um, there's a preview. Of Leviticus 19 will be our Sunday school lesson. Um, Jesus used Leviticus a lot. And it was more about relationship. Mm -hmm. And we always want to skirt around Leviticus, but Jesus, the, the whole, okay, uh, the love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, that is, that is Exodus, that's Deuteronomy, but the love your neighbor as yourself, that's all Leviticus. Leviticus. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, well, which is part of the, the tension with all of these... Um, confrontations that Jesus has with the keepers of the law over the 600 and some odd laws mm -hmm. that they had to keep that, mm -hmm. that this is morphed into, right? Right. And, uh, and the spirit of them and what they're for. And, you know, you could use the law that was given by God for the point of keeping people in relationship with God and one another. And it can be perverted into something that was used to keep people out of relationship with God and one another, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's a perversion and it was of done it. that, and so, done so, that way so often. Jesus engages with these things in his speak and in direct confrontation. To, that's not what that means. You know, I was in a, <laughs> I was in a, a student government associating association meeting one time in college, and was vice president was helping move things along. Roberts was the order, and was taking some shortcuts to keep it going because you know we had. Some, class coming up 
man, uh, one of the professors came over and whispered in my ear, you know that's not how that's supposed to work. And I was like, oh, yes, sir. And so I quit. <laughs> but, you know, give us a law and we'll find some ways uh -huh. to manipulate we'll it. So we'll <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. 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 Don't mind playing by the rules. I just want to know, know what, what they, they are. are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, our relationship with God is not found in loopholes. Mm -hmm. right. there's, there's, there's nothing to cheat. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to try to make it better. It's given to us. If, we're, if we are cheating in our relationship with God, it's only cheating ourselves. Right. It Absolutely. makes less than the, the gracious, mm -hmm. merciful gift. Yeah, we're not hurting anyone given. but ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thank you um, so much for your time today. Uh, I hope that you will reflect on these things and uh, share with us wherever you find this on Flock Note, on Facebook, uh, whatever, or come by and have a chat with us or send us a text or an email or a message on a kite, carrier pigeon. They're kind of nifty. Uh, kinda smoke messy. signals. I said nifty. They said are messy. messy. <laughs> Send those to Matt, no, the carrier no. pigeons, will you? Um, and we look forward to hearing your reflections and uh, looking forward to being with you soon. Peace. Peace. Bye, guys.